witches how you doing today we're back with another video and lately I've been thinking a lot about sort of things I wish I knew when I was a new witch and I've been getting a lot of questions lately from some new witches and I thought let's make a video about sort of just general like advice for new witches who are just kind of getting started because it's it is it's kind of a it's an exciting time but it's also sort of like there's a lot of like unknowns and I thought let's make a video and chat a little bit um this also some of this content has already been sort of covered if you check out the witchling wednesday playlist um, for a while there, I was sort of doing a series on Wednesdays where I addressed sort of topics to new witches. So some of these are sort of further expounded upon, if you will, in the videos in that playlist. So definitely check it out. So before we get into it, for those of you who are new around here, my name is Taya. Welcome to the channel. We talk about all things witchcraft. And for those of you who are returning viewers, maybe coming in from another video, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the support. And all of you, please consider subscribing. It is a really great way to just help us build the channel. So, things I wish I knew. Things about being a new witch. So, I think I have about 12 points. So, the first one is, witchcraft is a lifelong study. So, in that vein, you're never done, right? You're never, you've never, like, arrived. Like, oh, oh, now I'm a witch. Um, I know... For a lot of people, it's like, well, I just need to learn a few more things and then I'll, you know, okay. If you do witchcraft, you are a witch. So if you're doing witchcraft, you're a witch. And whether you're a brand new witch or you've been studying for a long time, you're, you're, you're a witch. And there is no point at which all of a sudden you're going to know everything and everything will sort of click into place and okay, now, now it's good. Now I've got there. Um, it is a lifelong sort of learning process and well, the next point is there's sort of no one way or right way to do it. One thing I would say is, in my opinion, if you are a witch, you're always learning. There's never a point where you're like, okay, now I know everything. There's always sort of a new experience to, had or, to be had or a new way to look at something. And so it is like lifelong study. Uh, number two, there's no one way, no right way to do witchcraft. Witchcraft is about exploration and the general, I got this one from Laura Tempest Zakroff, but if it works for you, it works. Might not work for anybody else in the whole entire witchcraft community, but if it works for you, it works. There are no, contrary to what social media would have you believe, there are no witchcraft police who are going to show up and be like, mm, you're doing it wrong, I'm taking away your witch license. Like, it doesn't work that way. And at the end of the day, opinions are like assholes everyone's got one okay everyone's got an opinion on how witchcraft should be done I'll be honest I have some opinions on what your practice should constitute to be a witch but I don't get to tell you what will or will not make you a witch if you are practicing witchcraft you are a witch and there is no one right way to do it um and that's really important and that's hard when you're starting out right because everybody's like somebody just tell me what I need to do and, and that's the point unless you join a very specific tradition that sort of dictates these are the things you must do you must know to be part of our tradition for the most part in in witchcraft there is no one right way number three hear me out just wait don't pay for it but on that other hand I am not saying that money should never exchange hands but if somebody is asking you for $1,600 or $2,400 for a year of witchcraft courses or whatever, dudes walk the other way, okay? But if somebody is, say, $75 or $100 for a year's worth of materials and coaching and support, that's fair, right? Like, don't be paying through the nose for, for witchcraft training. Okay, there are lots of places you can get it for free or for a like a reasonable cost, right? Um, I hear from so many people who are like, oh, I signed up for this great program and it's like, you know, $60 a month. And I'm like, what are you getting for $60 a month? A bunch of information that's been compiled that you could have found for free on the internet somewhere? I don't think that's a wise investment of your money. That's somebody looking to make a buck. 
somebody who is honestly in it to just teach and share may ask for compensation for their time and their um for their time and their uh materials right but make sure it's reasonable right for the tradition i'm in it's like i think it works out to about a hundred dollars for an entire year's course pack plus book of shadow pages to support all that course content plus there's like a facebook group and a a whole app dedicated to this tradition um there are monthly social calls monthly uh live broadcasts uh, more dedicated to teaching um Right? And all of that you just pay once. It's about a hundred bucks Canadian for the course manual and you work through it all and for a hundred bucks for a whole entire year's worth of study, assuming that you're doing like an exercise a week for 52 weeks. So it, that's very reasonably priced compared to somebody else who's asking, say, I, I saw a program, it was here in Canada, $2,400 for a year's worth of witchcraft. That's $200 a month. That's ridiculous, in my opinion. Um, all right, number four years of practice and titles don't mean anything okay they don't mean knowledge they may equate to knowledge but they don't necessarily especially when you're out on the internets in the, the wild wild internets um it's funny thorn mooney just did a video about you know this idea where uh, sorry it was a TikTok about the idea of like I've been a witch for 20 years. 20 years seems to be this benchmark that all of a sudden at 20 years, you're like, that's, that's how you know you've sort of made it. And at the end of the day, 20 plus years doesn't mean squat. I've been a witch for over 25 years. I'll be honest, the tradition, what I talk about on here, most of this is all from the last four years of work that I've done. It has nothing to do with those first 23 years that I spent dabbling in witchcraft. You know, now age wise, maturity wise, right? I'm 46 now. I probably know a whole lot more than I did when I was 23 and practicing witchcraft, just in that I've experienced the world at large. I'm much more better at looking for red flags, dealing with people, that kind of a thing. But that doesn't even necessarily come from years of witchcraft. That comes from life experience. So, you know, and, and titles, anybody can call themselves anything. Now, titles can be very hard earned. You know, titles within a tradition are earned, but out on the internets, even out at your local coffee meetup, anybody can call themselves a high priestess of Aphrodite. What does that really mean? That person might be a great resource if you're looking to work with Aphrodite. That person might also be blowing smoke up their own butt. You don't know, unless you're part of that same tradition that that title was bestowed upon them from, but half the time people can, you can just call yourself whatever you want. You know, I could say I'm a high priestess of whatever I want. It doesn't mean diddly at the end of the day, um, right? So again, you need to meet people and evaluate them on their own merits, not based on their title or their years of experience. Uh, next point, you gotta do the work. Um, it is lots of study. That was my first point. It's lifelong study, but it's very easy to become an armchair witch, right? Where you're learning and learning and learning and you're like, yeah, but you know, I just, I just need to learn a little bit more and, and then I'll, I'll put it into practice. But you need to do the work. Witches do witchcraft. Um, and when we're reading books, like, are you doing the exercises? Are you, and you don't have to do every single one, but are you doing some of them? Are you not just learning what the author is talking about, but experiencing what the author is talking about, right? Experience that. And then either you decide, yeah, okay, this is great. I wanna do this, I'll add this to my practice, or mm, that was interesting. I'll journal about it and then I'm gonna move on to the next thing, it wasn't really for me. At the end of the day, especially when it comes to witchcraft, practice makes progress right? The more you're practicing, the more you're experiencing, the more you're experimenting, the further along your practice will, will move. All right, next point, get involved in the community. It can be scary to put yourself out there. And I know so many people who are like, no, I just want to be a solitary practitioner. I don't want anything to do with the community. And listen, you don't have to if you don't want to, but don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Caveat, if you live somewhere where it is quote unquote not safe to be out publicly as a witch, right? 
I don't, don't flood my comments with, well, I live in the Bible Belt, you don't understand. Listen, if you're in a place where you cannot be public as a witch, th then don't. But for those of you who can, I would strongly encourage you to at least give it a try. It's amazing how accepting people can be and how you can really start to find your, your people. And like any community, in the witchcraft community, we have tryhards and blowhards and bitches. But it's like that in any community, right? Have you ever worked a job where every single person was your BFF? No, right? There's always some crazy girl in the back office that you don't get along with and that dude who can't, you know, treat you with respect f from that other department and da, da da But you know, you might meet the girl that works in the cubicle next to you and you become lifelong friends. Well, it's the same thing in the witchcraft community. If you don't put yourself out there, you won't find your people, you know? And uh, there's a, in that, Witchling Wednesday playlist. There's a there's a good one on red flags, things to look for about when you are getting out in the community and sort of what you what what you should look for. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get into all of that. But you know, if if you're in a place where it's safe to be out as a witch, um, and you feel like you might want to do it, give it a try. Give it a try. Um, you'd be amazed what you can, what you can sort of accomplish when you've got a few witchy friends on your side. All right, next point, it is not like TV, right? There are no big pyrotechnic explosions of magic. And magic is subtle. And I wish I would have had a better understanding of that when I was a new witch. You know, um, it took me a long time. I, I just felt like nothing was working for, for many years. And I think part of it was because somewhere in my brain, I was like... Okay, no, it doesn't work like on TV, but I mean, they had to get those ideas from somewhere. So there must be a little bit of razzle dazzle and I'm just like not doing it right because I'm not finding it. Magic is subtle. And that's not to say that sometimes you might not get some pyrotechnics, but for the most part, it is very subtle. And you need to learn to listen and learn to feel your body to really be in in to the sensations that are going through your body very often that magic is very subtle but once you learn to listen for it once you learn to sense it within yourself all of a sudden it's there um and i wish i would have spent more time sort of you know you hear a lot where people are like oh when you're new you need to learn to ground and center you need to learn to ground but what does that really mean you need to learn to listen to be still to be grounded yes and to really feel those sensations in your body. Take notes. I wish, I wish I would have done this when I was new. You know, whether it's a book of shadows, a grimoire, or just a freaking journal, write it down. You know, write down what you're doing, what you're thinking and what you're learning. You know, when you, what you're doing. So keep records. I did this spell. These are the ingredients. This is when I did it. This is the ritual I did. This is the, you know, here's a quick picture of my setup or, you know, and here's what we did and here's what we said. Um, what you're thinking. Journal about where you are in your path because you're going to start to see the patterns evolving where you're, you know, what I thought was the simple thing. It's now unraveling and it's becoming this like magical you know, like, how did I end up with these thoughts and ideas that I have? Where did I come from? And what you're learning as you're reading books, it's really easy to sit down and just read book after book after book after book. So like I said before, do the exercises in the book. Journal about it. Write about what you're learning. When you get to that sentence where you go, oh, oh, that's a, that's a game changer. Oh, that's really like, oh, that's interesting. I need to remember that. Write it down. Um, because you won't remember. I have books on my shelf that I have to go back and reread now because I'm like, I know I read them and I know they were great books and I'm sure I took something from them and added to my practice from it. But I don't actually remember what that author particularly said. I wish I had like a little pack of notes where I could flip back and go to, oh, here's Treading the Mill by Nigel Pearson. Here's what I learned, da, 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 da. Um, you know, some more specific points about specifically what resonated with me. The other thing that's interesting with that is then when you go back, maybe you reread that book again five years later, 
and you take away totally different things than you did the first time. And it's, it's interesting to be able to compare that and go, oh, so this is what I got out of it when I was new. Now that I've been practicing five years, now here's what I'm taking from that book. Um, very, very interesting. And it's, it, you know, trust me, when you get further down your path, you'll look back and go, oh, I wish I had kept more records. Sounds tedious now. But when you look back, it's like, I, I, I wish that I had more, like, I know I came, I came into this very goddess-based. I'm not there anymore. How did I make that switch? I have no idea. Couldn't tell you when it happened, how it happened. I just know it did. I'm still very, like, goddess-based. I'm very witch mother, but I'm also very witch father. When did my practice make that shift? And why? Right? What spurred in my head to make me make that change? I couldn't tell you. All right, this is for, not maybe necessarily for every new witch, but if you are a Caucasian witch in North America specifically, learn about cultural appropriation. And I'm, I'm going to do another video on cultural appropriation and what exactly it is and what exactly it isn't. People like to throw around cultural appropriation when it's not always quite the case. But especially if your witchcraft practice tends towards the more new agey, it's really easy to see stuff that looks great, that looks interesting. And honestly, you're on the internet, nobody cites their sources. You're like, oh, this witch said that looks great. And all of a sudden you're off to the races, but you might be doing something that is very culturally appropriative, right? Decolonize your practice. Um, at the end of the, way, the day, disrespecting the old gods and disrespecting the ancestors of the land upon which you live is not a good way to build a practice. Even if you do it unknowingly, it's, you know, like to turn around and say, well, it's not my fault, I was ignorant, isn't really, uh, isn't really a good argument in, in the first place. So learn about it, learn what it is, learn how to avoid it. Um, and like I said, we'll do a video on that one to blow it out a little bit more. But again, learn about cultural appropriation. I wish I would have done that. There's a whole lot of stuff I would have knocked out of my practice a whole lot sooner. Ah, there's a video on this, but I'm going to add it here. Don't call yourself a baby witch. Um, a witch is a witch. If you're practicing witchcraft, if you're doing witchcraft, you're a witch. And a baby, let's just break it down. A baby is helpless. A baby needs people to do things for them. They literally need somebody to spoon feed them, right? Or bottle feed them. Witchcraft is about self-empowerment and it is about doing it for yourself. And this idea of being a, I'm just a baby. It, it, it just gives off this idea that like, I need other people to spoon feed it to me. And I'm sorry, no, you don't. No, you don't. Again, we go back to there is no one right way to learn witchcraft. It is a lifelong study. You're never going to get to the place where you're like, oh, okay, now I gotta figure it out, I know everything. There's always something new to learn. So yeah, baby witch, it's, it's infantilizing. So don't, don't do that. And this is a hard one for some people. And again, it comes back to that idea of wanting to have wanting to have a right way to do it, what, you know, tell me the way to do this, is people asking on the groups is, how do I do this? Or does anyone have a spell for X, Y, and Z? Okay, again, you're asking people to do the work for you, right? Can you go to your spell books and do the research and come back and just tell me what to do? Mm-mm. You might say, hey, I'm writing a spell for X, Y, and Z. Has anybody in this group ever used the herbs A, B, or C for that? I'm kind of, you know, not sure which one would be better to incorporate. That shows that I've done some work and I'm just stuck on this one little point. Instead of just, does anybody have a ritual to, a con you know, a, a spell for X, Y, and Z? Right? Again, don't ask other people to do the work for you you need to do the work. And a lot of the work of witchcraft is, yeah, figuring out correspondences, figuring out what am I going to put in that spell and how am I going to put it together? And what's the best way to do that for me? And the best way for Taya to do it isn't the best way for you to do it, right? And finally, and this is a big one, trust in yourself and your journey. It's going to be completely unique to you. 
right? Your journey won't be like any other witch's journey. We can find teachers and mentors along the way, but honestly, if they're any good, there is still gonna be a bunch of room for individuality, right? I am learning it, a very specific tradition. And I went and I said, this is the way that you've prescribed we make protection cords. Could I do it this way? And you know what, she, she didn't say, no, no, this is how we do it in our tradition. She said, that's interesting. Um, these are the sort of elements that we need to sort of hit. These are the key notes we need to hit while we're doing that protection cord. But if you feel that you can do them while doing them a different way, give it a try, see how it works. She said, she's like, I'm not the witchcraft police. Yeah, totally, give it a try. And I appreciate that. And the funny thing is at the end of the day, I will probably continue to make them the way that she originally prescribed because I was like, oh yeah, the way you do it hits all these key points and the way I'm looking at doing it, I'm not sure how I would work that out. But she gave me the space to work it out for myself, right? She's not just spoon feeding me answers. And that's, that's important because at the end of the day, you need to learn to trust your experiences because your experiences won't be like anybody else's, you know? And when you're asking like, what does this mean? Is that a sign? You tell me, is it a sign? What does it mean to you? Do you think it's a sign? If you think it is, then it, it is. And what do you think it means? I mean, I found a goose feather, is that a sign? Well, if I think it is, it is. If I think it isn't, it isn't. Nobody else can tell me that. And what does it mean? Well, again, it's gonna mean something different for everybody, right? That person who grew up and got attacked by a goose when they were young, it might mean caution, be careful, to the person who is obsessed with geese and just loves them. It might be about flying free, you know? Like, it's gonna mean something different based on who you are. So trust in yourself and trust in your journey and, and don't try to rush it. Just, it, again, it's about exploring. It's very much about exploration and it's not about arriving at some point where you're like, yeah, okay, now I'm done. It's a lifelong study and there is no one way or right way. And again, I'm just going over the points now, but right again, I just, I hope that for those of you that are newer or maybe for people that are a little bit more experienced or a little farther along their path, there's some helpful advice in this for you. So before we end this, I'm gonna ask you do you have any advice for new witches? What do you think new witches need need to know? And I don't mean like, oh, they need to know tarot. Oh, they need to know, you know, one form of divination. I mean, literally, what do they need to know about being a witch? I'd love your input. I'd love to know what you think is important for those new witches to know, especially from those of you who are a little further down your path, right? And you're, you look back and go, oh, I wish I would have known. I wish somebody would have told me. Um, yeah, leave us a comment. Let us know. I think it'd be an interesting discussion. And yeah, that's it. That's our video for today. Thanks so much, you guys, for hanging out. It's much appreciated. We'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks so much, you guys.